there. This, ladies and gentlemen, is called Sally. <laughs> Good. Good. There's no grind. Yeah. Hey, that's pretty good. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. It's about a 15 degree change. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on out there, YouTube land? Today I am with the big man, Kevin Nash. We're talking about a five time WCW champion, WWF champion, tag team champion. I think you have, what, 21 total world titles? I don't know. Something like that. I don't, I don't keep <laughs> he doesn't, track. He doesn't keep track. I don't keep track. Division one basketball player was in the military as well. Uh, keeping these deltoids humongous. Uh, we're gonna work on a little bit today. We're gonna work on the neck, shoulders. You know, he's gonna talk about some of the injuries that he's had, and uh, we'll ask him some wrestling questions for you guys, the fans out there. You ready? Also, it's, it's like Marathon Man, so he's gonna continue asking me, is, is it safe yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, is there a safe word? <laughs> Peppermint. Right. <laughs> Do hostage. <laughs> Ike. Ike. All right, let's rock and roll. I mean, it, as far as just like, I'm uh, 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 just a normal, like, like I'm. That's good. You know, like I have pretty good flex, but I mean. And, and, and back is pretty good, spine's like pretty good. My, my, I, I mean, every once in a while I get a little jacked and I'll have to rotate, but I can just usually just rotate my hips and, you yeah, know, man. And, and get them in. Nice. If a lot of folks didn't know, uh, Kevin was, Big time basketball player, played at University of Tennessee, took him to the Sweet 16, played professionally in Europe. As he would say, a real athlete before he was uh, a professional entertainer and, uh, and a movie star, super shredder. And uh, so both knees he's had done, um, but you know, the one knee was a lot worse. You want to talk through like that injury that you had yeah, this, uh, playing basketball? I was playing ball. It was, um, of course, the game was finished. I had no reason to be on the floor, but I was, and I told the coach I was tired. And uh, ball went off the, I'm left-handed, ball went off the rim. And in Europe, uh, there's no goaltending. So, and U.S. ball, if this is the rim, there's an imaginary cylinder that goes above it, and you can't interfere with it. But in European ball, if the ball goes in there, you can take it and dunk it. So the ball came, it came up in front, and I dunked it with my right hand, and as I dunked it, I saw somebody come underneath me, so I just reached up with this hand and grabbed, and the momentum took me this way, and as I came back and, and looked at him clear, I let go, and when I let go, somebody had come underneath me like this, and my foot basically landed like that, and then turned this way. So I, when I hit the ground, the feeling was that I tore my, I, like my hamstring had rolled, and then when I looked, like sat up and looked, my leg was <laughs> this this part of my leg was this way. And you tore every leg and the, the foot middle. and the foot down. <laughs> oh jeez. And I was just like, and every, the only thing holding my leg together was my patella tendon and the skin. And I basically sat there and watched my knee go like this. It's a balloon. You know. So when they went in the first time, they uh, before the surgery I wasn't I wasn't out yet and they're working on me I'm in Germany this is like 1984 I mean orthopedics were, were not uh, I think Mingala was in the room <laughs> <laughs> and they put an 18 gauge on the side of me to drain it they had a 50 cc syringe they drained it and when they unscrewed it blood shot out of it about that far Whoa. so they just basically just put the port there and just put a towel and just kind of squeezed it and then they came over and finally, you know, they gave me something to sedate me. And when I woke up, uh, the, the, the doctor said, uh, it's too bad for me to fix. You're gonna have to probably go back to the States. Jeez. And I was just like, okay. And I looked down on him, I'm in a cast, which if anybody knows, you get a knee surgery nowadays, you're in a machine when you wake up that's moving you. I so I, the atrophy, by the time I got back to the States, my forearm was bigger than my, my quad. Jeez, please. And uh, I had uh, several surgeries, um, but just not by, they did an osteotomy, which was a new procedure, which kind of takes pressure off the bone and all this. What it did was just cause more valgus. And yeah. as, as time went on, my knee just, you know. Kept moving in. And you wrestled for 
twenty five yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. twenty five years with you know with a, with a with a Bragg traditional brace on that was so tight that when I took it off, it looked like I had a tourniquet on for you know the, the course of the day. And you've had both knees replaced now, yeah? No, just this this okay. one. Okay. This one here is just actually a quad tear. Okay, I tore the quad muscle. That's so, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. that's why it's such a nicer shape to the top of it. Yeah. A nicer scar. Okay, and you've had 17 surgeries, you said. 17 on this one, the 17th being the... the, the re Just on the knee? Yeah, this knee. I've had nine on this one. And you can still squat like that. Yeah, I have hey. had, I mean, I've had a tip fib compound, compound here, um, this triceps reattached three times, bicep, I've had five, different procedures done on this shoulder. I think three or four on this one. Next one being, I've, I've been getting, uh, you see that? That's a goinal cyst. That's underneath my you can AC get a drain. Joint. I've been, I got, I'll get a drain, get a drain, get a drain, then eventually they gotta remove it. Okay. You know, it's weird. It's like, you know, it just, and, but what, what this one happened was the roots started messing with the brachial plexus. Okay, so you were getting nerve problems. Yeah, so I was starting to get... I, I still, every, it, because my neck is so bad, um, I still, when I wake up every morning, I don't know whether I've... It's just numbness or I've had a stroke. <laughs> you know, my hands are... <laughs> like, what's and, that going to be? And I wake up three or four times a night because my hands are, are just... But they're not cold. Okay. You know. So it's not blood, it's nerve. Yeah, it's nerve. Okay. It was a, a guy named Youngblood that was used to be kind of like the neck guru down in San Antonio, mm -hmm. and uh, he had done, uh, he'd seen Kurt, Austin, and me, mm -hmm. and he said those are the three worst necks he's ever seen, and he put me in one. <sighs> now I think Kurt, of course, Kurt, yeah. since then continued to you know at such a high level competing. I'm sure Kurt's neck is by far probably the worst, but. Um, it was funny because when I went down there, he, in his mind, um, thought that he was going to fuse me three through seven. Uh -huh. And so I sat there in a chair and he says, you know, how far can you go to the left? And I went, he goes, how far can you go to the right? And I went, he goes, down, back. Yeah, pretty good. And he said, thank God we don't operate on MRIs. Right. <laughs> That's a, that is a great point. You know, he says, "Wow!" Point. He says, "He says, he says, functionality." He says, "You have, you still have." Good, he says, good "Okay, yeah. I'll beat to hell." But, <laughs> I, but I still go to the gym when I'm home. I, I mean, I'll go, you know, every day. So, okay. and like I said, the, the range is pretty good. You know, you're moving pretty well. Okay, so so primarily we're working on like the neck muscles and trying to get a little more shoulder range today. Is that what you want to focus yeah. on? Check the pelvis. If you can get my 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 neck. I feel like a cartoon, you know, where the guy gets the, the, the character gets hit with a mallet and just kind of top of the head just smashes you down. I feel like that. Okay, now that's the feeling I have. Well, we have a mallet, so I know I've watched. <laughs> I, I watched. All right, bring that right arm up all the way. Yeah, pretty good. And we looked at his images, so he does have some bone spurring and you know not a ton of cartilage left in there, but again. Range pretty good, functional, and he's still doing shoulder work. So keeping the deltoid strong really protects the joint. So yeah, it, it can make up for rotator cuff weakness. It can make up for lack of joint space. So one of the most important things as we age is to make sure we're still doing strength training, right? It doesn't have to be heavy weight, but you just want to make sure that muscle is activated. Yeah, um, absolutely. All right, so let's get into here first. So we're gonna have you look straight down first. And what I didn't mention in the intro, he's a two-time WWE Hall of Famer now. Once as Kevin Nash and once with the NWO. Yeah, your, your resume is too long in wrestling for me to even get through any of it. Founder of the NWO, you know, main member of the Click. Uh, worst, tag, worst, tag, worst gimmick ever. Tag team champion. <laughs> created the NWO Wolfpack. Oz? Yeah, this was pretty rough. Oz is pretty bad. Oh, there! I mean, I loved I loved Dusty. I mean, I loved him to death. When he brought me in and told me he was going to make me Oz, and I just looked up to him, I said, "You, <laughs> you do realize that Oz is a geographical region? <laughs> and it's the, he's the Wizard of Oz." He said. So between Steel <laughs> and Diesel, you thought Oz was a good fit? Yeah. This is like wow. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Well, how did you get into wrestling? 
Um, did you grow up watching wrestling at all? Well, I mean, I, you're I think, from North. So yeah, well, I, I, we, we, we had big time wrestling, which was the original Sheik's territory. Okay. And uh, so that was, uh, you know, it was black and white. But yeah, you know, it's funny how these these guys talk about, um, you know, work rate and all this stuff. You know, and, oh man, yeah, he he couldn't work. I'm like, my favorite wrestler was Moose Chodlock. He was a big six foot six guy that carried a a moose head to the ring. Like that's he was, you know, he was the drizzling shits as far as a worker, but he was cool. Right. Yeah. You know? Big Daddy Cool. Cool works. Yeah, like I'll take cool. that. I'll take, I'll take cool. I'll take cool. Can't teach that. That's true. I mean, Wolfpack was cooler than Hollywood, I feel like, so. Yeah. Had the theme music, the headbands. I mean, when they were uh, really not pushing the, the black athletes like they should at the time. Uh-huh. Like, and you're a 35-year-old white man with a bandana backwards to represent Tupac <laughs> so how am I I first feel how, 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 how do I how do I uh, like a rock because it hurts like shit <laughs> <laughs> you can poker base right there's a good spot gonna hold that one breathe through that and we're both uh, stem cell brothers now too so we're yes. talking about uh, you know bioaccelerator and how you felt like a big difference just from the IVs and the and right. surgical injections, right? Right. Like I said, it was uh, so much of what I um, got out of it as far as like, moving forward in life was just cognitive. Mm -hmm. You know, my cognitive ability just, Shut you up. know. Yeah, I mean, I'm a much better Jeopardy player. There we go. <laughs> That's what really matters. In life, I, I mean, mean, right? Hey, I'm with you. Yeah. When they go to 16, 16th century French poets and you get one, that's where I get screwed. Your shit's on fire. <laughs> Dude, that's, I can, and I just can't remember any of it. Like, it's never been interesting. Geography, world history, yeah. obviously sports, music. Like, I could crush all that stuff. But what like, you have to do. Baroque era. Like, and I'm like, ah. Like, I was dyslexic. And I hate fiction. Uh, I effing hate fiction. Yeah. If I didn't read it in, in honors English in high school, I didn't read it. I don't read fiction. I read yeah. biographies. I read science books. I don't. That's the same with me. You know, Netflix does, and, and, and HBO, I mean, they do such a good job with their docs. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, sometimes I'd rather just watch, you know. Sit yeah, back like, and, like that cute one we were talking about. Yeah. You know, just like to, to watch and, 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 you know, I mean, of course, everything you, everything in life is, is going to be skewed to whoever's, you know, directing, writing. I mean, it's just, that's just life, but... Or even how you interpret it. Yeah, exactly. And you, I mean, you, you, you've got two Illuminati guys right now, and he started the New World Order. I mean, so you guys saw me throwing a picture of this with with Paige. So yeah, yeah. And, and one of my things is like, I don't know what your what your feeling is on, on digital currency, but I'm big. You, are you big on it? I'm big. See, and and, and this is this is where, where where my brain goes. So. I'm a huge Illuminati guy, huge World Bank guy, Rothschilds, and um, that's because you're in it, right? Right, we're yeah, in it. You're in it, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, the last guy to try to go outside and start his own bank was Gaddafi. Yeah, and he, had, he had gold and Denard, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, they did a smokescreen called Benghazi, and then. He was pretty much sodomized to death in the back of a pickup truck. Woof. So that didn't go too well for him. And I just say that have people come to me and they tell me, you know, the U.S. currency is, is worthless. And I say, okay, then why is a Bitcoin worth 33,000 U.S. dollars? <laughs> so if it's... 64 as of today. Is that right? Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a little, little off on the crypto, but... When this not, air, not that I checked this morning or anything. <laughs> when this airs, it could very easily, because anybody that really is following it knows that crypto goes in four years. I think we should stop calling it crypto at this point too. Yeah. Now that it's all, you know, yeah, tracked and kept and you know taxable. But the only thing is though, that it's not regulated. 
But back in 2012, it was really crypto when we were using it for what it's supposed to be used for. Right. And it's, you know, to me, it's one of those things where, you know, people say, you know, you know the best thing about, you know, digital currency is it's not regulated. And then they say, you know, the worst thing about digital currency is it's not regulated. And I just look at it and I say to myself, like, could you imagine if there was no SEC, how many, man, how many just Ponzi schemes? Well, and it will be regulated. Yeah, if I, and, 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 and my whole thing is, like, I've got some NDFs and some other things, yeah. like, you know, that are going to pay me in, in crypto. So I'll get into the game without having skin in the game. There you go. You're so know, playing I mean, with house money. Exactly. Which, that, I don't have a problem with that, you know. And so you played basketball in high school then? Yeah. 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 So went to Tennessee, Knoxville. Yep. Then went to Europe. And so was it after you hurt your knee that the basketball dream was dead? Was that it? Well, I came back, you know, and I, and I really rehabbed the hell out. I'm a real good rehab guy. Okay. Like, if you tell me to do something like once a day, I do it 11 times a day. He's got all the gizmos here, too. He's got the yeah. Beamer. He's got... Yeah, I got the, I, I, that, that, that machine there is old, but it's actually an infrasound as, okay. a, as opposed to ultra. ultra it's infra, which is, is, a, is a pulse. And, it, of course, it doesn't heat metal, but it'll... Boy, if you get like a like a golf ball like that you're on, mm -hmm. <laughs> you gotta so, break it up. Yeah, so, yeah I mean, it, it'll it, it won't do what you're doing, but it will alleviate it enough where I can, you know, think about actually putting my head on a, some kind of a pillow instead of sleeping in my chair for the third night in a row. Mm. So when your neck gets jacked up, you, you can't lay down? It's tough. Yeah. So you started with WCW, right? Correct. Okay. How did you get how did you get into there? So I was I was bouncing at a at a a strip club, hot, very high end strip club called the Cheetah in Atlanta. What took you to Atlanta to begin with? Um got I got involved with these um uh these criminals and <laughs> uh Ended up getting arrested by the FBI. <laughs> Spent a little time in the uh, Russell Building, and uh, when I got out, uh, they said, "Hey, man, uh, we got a we we got a place for you. Why don't you go?" So they know you're coming. I walked in the door, and they, you know, it was six ten, about three thirty. Big boy. And they said, uh, "When can you start?" And I said. I don't have a car. I don't have. I don't have nothing. Like I got it. So they front me a little bit of cash. I went and got my tuxedo, and uh, it's a big ass tuxedo. Yeah, custom tailored. No, but the house mother did it for me. Okay. I like on on the spot, you know. <laughs> pinned it. Pinned it up my first shift. I walked out with just the the shirt on, which I had to dart. Hmm. You know, but uh, nah, it was. It was a good job, but uh, the boys would come in there a lot of times after tapings. One of them was Barry Wyndham, and uh, I'd see Barry out around town. Different, there's a bar I can't remember what it was called now. It was kind of a rock and roll place, and I'd see Barry in there a lot. And we'd always talk. Barry's a big old dude, and uh, he said, "Man, you're a good looking dude. You're big." He said, "Yeah, I think about doing this." I said, "Yeah, man." I said, "I got a pretty, you know, pretty dick gig here, you know." The one thing, if anybody that's ever worked at a really high-end uh, gentleman's club is uh, you really don't have a problem going to work. <laughs> yeah, it's never like, oh, really? Another shift? Because <laughs> you're getting paid for what every other guy's, you know, dropping two bills. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're walking with 500, and they're, they're leaving with 300 less and a phone number on a matchbook when they call it a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to take out... <laughs> Oh man, she got me. No, really, dude. Come back and try again. As I said, I, I learned the I learned the work before I was a wrestler. <laughs> the ladies, the ladies thought you had to work. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they taught me the work. So that's funny. Yeah. So, you, so, so what? They just got your attention. Like, they just right. got my attention. So um, I was talking to Barry, and I just asked him what he made, and he said, you know, between two fifty and three hundred. And I was like, all right, that's significant. And uh, at the time, I mean, I was already married to my wife, and she anything to get me out of there, 
you know, to t I mean, even to take a pay cut of, of a couple hundred, you know. Makes sense. Yeah, well, I mean, but it's, you know, it's like when I, I came in to talk to Oli, you know, when they first brought me in, and I was like, dude, like, I drive a two-year-old Cadillac. My wife's got a brand-new Mustang. It's like, not bad. like, yeah, like, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not, you know, really looking forward to, you know, number one, taking a 30% 30, 30 pay cut, number two, reporting to the to the IRS all my earnings. Ah, yeah. You know? Speaking of criminals. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, when you're 1099, you got to do what you got to do. Yep. The last thing you want to do is you don't want the IRS saying, oh, by the way, you owe us. And if you don't have that money that day, boy, it's... Yeah, and prove that you didn't know about it, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, But wait, this feels like uh, not innocent until proven guilty. It feels like the opposite of that, actually. Yeah. But you know, the, the funny thing was, remember when that, that movement went around? And uh, like Snipes was one of the guys that was yeah. was huge into it, and it was like uh, back in the day, um, you were either like a, an armorer or a, a gunner, or like everybody had these um, like military uh, assignments, and um, you know that's that's like kind of where this the, and they would ask you know like basically when you sign your tax return, you're basically you know saying that I agreed to, 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 to pay my taxes. Right. So if you never have signed a tax return, you're fine, but if you've ever signed one, now you're you've, you've you know, you're you're in the you're you're in the mix. And uh, I was just like, man, I've I have i have just I've heard so many wrestlers that just got in trouble, you know, with with not paying their taxes. So I just I've always made sure that I, I, I would tell my tax people, man, like I don't want none of this gray area. I mean, take your feet to the line. You know, I'm not asking you to step over the line. I'm yeah. Like, I don't want to yeah. pay. I don't want to pay more. Agreed. Than, but I. I, I don't I, want to pay I, extra. I, yeah, but man, I don't. I don't want there to, to be any gray area. Right. Feel that in your forehead. Yes. This is local. You feel it radiate yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna hold that spot till it starts to fade. Okay, so they got you into the wrestling gimmick, and then, uh, so you immediately went into tag team, or you were doing solo? Yeah, no, tag team. Ta yeah. And uh, the thing was, is they- This Master Blasters? Yeah, and they, they put me with this guy, Corey Pendarvis, who was um, just absolutely, was, he was illiterate. He could not read. We, and at, like the second or third day we were on the road, he would just like, I'll have what he's having. You know, because he couldn't read the menu. We had, we had our opening match, we went through it like, you know, 50 times down at the this little training center they had and uh, you know I had it you know we, first night live my first match ever was live on, on national TV and uh, I hit all my spots did what I was supposed to do I mean yeah I was green but I mean I didn't make myself look like a jack I, he missed a headbutt off the second rope by about nine feet and they say that it, you learn like the day that you actually hear the crowd, you know that you understand the business. And I heard about 8,000 people just go, oh. <laughs> I said, well, we just lost them. <laughs> Push your neck straight back. Push straight back. A little more. Good. And now look up. Can you like one of the thing? One of the things I, I notice on me is like that my that my T two uh -huh. is really like rotated this way. Point to where you feel it the most. On a T two. On a T two. Yeah. Is it on the sides or straight back that you feel? Well, I mean, I I mean, I can I, I feel like I'm rotated like uh -huh. this, but I get I get like a dead like a a bad burn, like back in here sometimes. So like, right here you feel it. Yeah. Like, okay. Look down and kind of round your shoulders a little bit. So that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's twisted to the left. For sure. Mm hmm Compared to that one. So typically it's that way on you? Yeah. Okay. All right, pull your shoulders back a little bit. And then lean towards me just a tad. Okay. Good. And then you're gonna pull that shoulder back. Good. Good. Okay, back to the side. Relax the shoulders. Did you hear that? What's that? Yeah, I just did, when I turned back like that, it felt like it set. Hey, yeah. T. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's up? Hey How's it going? How's it going? That's my son, Tristan. 
Huh. We're just hammering your dad. Good deal. <laughs> Where'd you feel there? You feel that one move? Yeah, I actually feel it in my lower back. Yeah. In the middle back too? It was more it was it was more low back neck. Okay. That's when you get into right there. Go ahead and turn your head to the right all the way. And then back to center. And then again. So you're also one of the people that a lot of people credit with with, you know, guaranteed contracts and all that kind of stuff because you know, uh, obviously when you when you switched over to WWF, you know. Right. And then back again, uh, held all three titles at the same time. Yeah, they pushed me. Yeah. You know, there, and, and people, you know, I, I probably didn't even have 300 matches when they made me champion. But the thing was is that at the time the WWF was, was under scrutiny from the federal government for steroids. That's right, I remember that. And what happened was, you know, they, 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 they put that De Pasquale as their, their testing guy. Mm -hmm. And they were uh, really, I mean, the testing was, was, it was no joke. Like you would go to Philadelphia on a Sunday and do a urine test and then drive that night for a shot in Hershey, Pennsylvania and, and be tested again. And it was like, you never, you know, and which, which completely, you know, also took out anybody using cannabis. Right. You know, because they made these cannabis rules. So basically what, what they did was they created a environment where prescription drugs and alcohol were basically the only things you could do. And I think during that time frame we lost about 45 guys to overdoses of somas and vikes and booze and you know so it was a you know, that's one thing you know wrestlers it's very common for them not to make it to 40. Oh yeah. So let's take that hand and reach down towards your foot with it. This one? Yep. And then go ahead and shrug back up. Reach back down. And back up. And reach down. And back up. And down. And back up. And down. This, ladies and gentlemen, is called Sally. <laughs> Looks pretty natural to me. There it goes. <sighs> 1955 Popeye. <laughs> there you go. That's a good music reference. <laughs> All right, let's work along this front here. As you can tell, I don't get. I have a very good soft tissue person anywhere around me. So then you, you were champ, and then uh, Bischoff came calling. Is that what happened there? Um, or were you just you had people over there that Scott, you were friends with still? Scott got the offer first. Okay. Scott was was you know in Dallas kind of was the. Uh, he was the, still over there. He, he was with WCW, and so he you know. Eric, he you know he kind of was the kind of mediated you know so Eric didn't get any heat, and. Dallas kind of was the go-between, and then Scott kind of showed me, basically in a deal memo, what he was going to get. And I was just like, Phew. he says, "You got to ask for more because we got. I got a favor nation, so if you get more, I get more." Right. So then we kind of did it for what we could, and I mean, just the fact that I think our our dates for the first year dropped from I'd done 324 Whoa. at the WWF that, that year before and I actually I mean I, I keep I'm OCD I have impeccable you know I can tell you what I what body part I worked out that day what the building was what the house was because mm -hmm. I'd always grab the, the sheet and see what the house was and compare it to, for payments 
and it was just like t to go from that to 150 days huge difference was, yeah and my wife was at that Probably time terrible. my wife was seven and a half months pregnant with my son and I was just like I wasn't going to be that that dad that you know and you have to realize this is before cell phones before everything else so you're traveling four guys in a Cadillac and you go get your beer after the match and everybody gets 10 minutes at the phone booth to make your, oh, one, your one and only call to your, your <laughs> wife that night. And after 10 minutes, they're blasting the horn like, come on, because you got 300 to drive, you know? Right, you're on to the next. Yeah, so it's just like, we, you know, this, this 40, you know, 40 minutes is a lot of time. Right. You know, you're hoping one of the guys fighting with his wife. <laughs> Cut it to thirty. Yeah, you know, you wake, you, you get to a hotel at four o'clock. Pray they'll give you a one o'clock checkout. Right. Then you've got to send out somebody to steal towels. So you've got towels for that night at the arena, so somebody's got to go out and hit the maids for four towels. Hmm. Misdirect them. <laughs> Okay, so you guys get the towels from the hotel. Yeah, okay. yeah, because you, you leave in the, you know you leave in the building. You grab the next set, you know, go to the next hotel. That was always you could tell those off, kind of beige Marriott towels. <laughs> that were, those are the top guys. Okay. Yeah. You because know. they were staying at what hotel? Yeah, the Marriott. The Marriott. Yeah, yeah, you could tell. I remember one time me, me and Austin were traveling together. We used to just stay in shit boxes, and you know everybody's. Pulling out their Marriott towels. I mean, Steve pull out these uh, like barren, you know, something you find in a flop house. But we we would we would stay in a twenty dollar hotel. We didn't care, sure. you know, on two doubles, you know. So I used to be on the road. Mot hey. Motel Six. All right, yeah. sign me up. I would, Might be murdered much anyway. Motel Six with the two with the two doubles and a roll away. Right. I don't know why it it took it took us it took me almost two and a half three years to figure out that it would, if we were working on it, four, we'd train for four days and take the fifth day off, but we were on the road for 25 or 30. So you would pack for 30 days. And then uh. you'd, you would wash your, you'd get these giant CCM hockey bags, you know. And uh, your life, babe, uh, you know, <laughs> it's a grind. Oh, uh, and it, it was like every I was always the drive the wheel man, and then I was also always the uh, I always packed the trunk, so it was like Tetris, you know, if you get all those bags and you know that. Well, if you're the OCD guy, you could do it. Oh, yeah, I could do it. You look right at it and be like, All right, I could, I, 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 could do, yeah, I could do this, I could, I could pack the, I could pack the car before they could get in it. But I was also the guy that if we had a rental car for 21 days, I'd, go, I'd, go, I'd go take it through the car wash. Okay. You wash the rental car? <laughs> yeah, wash the rental Anybody car. Anybody out there, comment below if you, if you, if you ever wash your rental car. That's not this kid. That's when you're OCD. Yeah. yeah. That's when you, you got to get it. Please vacuum that. <laughs> I said, like, please, please. Let's swing over here. Drop your right shoulder down all the way. No, nothing there. We'll try the single. No, not too much. Kind of figured. I'm sorry. Definitely got some on the traction. Yeah. No, my hands feel like much. I, my, 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 my hand strength feels better. You feeling blood kind of pumping in there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to oscillate you here. the scalings too. Yeah, right there's some roughness. All right, so then you're, you were you were tagging with Shawn Michaels. You come over, and then the outsiders are born. Right. Which which is funny because the steroids, you know, scandal, damn near killed the the entire yeah the entire thing. And then the NWO kind of revived the entire thing, you know. So without that NWO, you know, promo. Is there a DX? Is there a late 90s boom? Probably not, right? I don't think there's an attitude here. Right, at all. 
like to me the thing that was going to sell was was going to be hyper violence you know the crow was was kind of they had went so long with the red white and blue you know the the baby face that you know after the big win against some you know facsimile of somebody that we were at war with right right you know and that and then you know the the final climatic wrestlemania of you know our, our super you know guy you know raising the flag in the corner and that's what they took was what you know the people wanted to see as their hero when in essence it was it was the crow it was the anti-hero right and i remember sitting down talking to vince mcmahon i said well you saw the movie heat right and he said yeah I said at the end, I said, did you want to narrow or did you want Pacino to go over? And he said, well, to narrow. I said, yeah, he's a heel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. That's like, that's where we're at in society. I said, you know, we got, we got to go with that. We were talking about like censorship, right? So like in the early 90s, you had like the Karens who were tearing up like rap CDs and like you know, trying to cancel everybody back then, right? Right. And then now we're kind of like over the top, you know, everybody and their feelings, canceling people for everybody's feelings. To me, like the late 90s, early 2000s was like the pinnacle of just like anything goes, right? Exactly. Like, it was just this weird, yeah. weird spot where like Eminem, yeah. Eminem's rap lyrics were just like whatever, right? And like on, on TV, people were having, you know, flipping off the camera, right? And and hitting people with bats. And, I think and NWA was like the, the start of that, you know? The rap group. Yeah, not like, the not the wrestling promotion. No, they uh, really just just push the envelope. Yeah, you know, Public Enemy. You know, there's there's a bunch around that time. Yeah, but it's F, it's F the police. You know, it's like wow. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, the late '90s, you had like Tom Green, and you know. Yeah, uh, Tom, Tom Green was. It's rubbing his butt on things, yeah. and, and you know, like I said, wrestlers were doing bra and panty matches, and 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 musical lyrics, and you know, just. It was why it was an attitude era. Yeah, it totally, and not just wrestling, but culturally. Maybe they were intertwined, right? Maybe, th maybe the wrestling helped drive I, the culture. I think one of the biggest things, you know, that happened was there was always a, to a degree, and I mean, I grew up in a very like Detroit's very diverse, right? So uh, America as a whole, like, had, especially suburban America hadn't really embraced you know any b black culture sure and when especially i think when when death row came around and tupac you know who was kind of one of the first well let's be real you know, the big wigs at the corporation saw yeah, the money yeah right yeah i mean <laughs> they said wait the white kids in suburbia are really liking this yeah, stuff and, then, and all of a sudden the white kids you know they're wearing with their jeans i mean they're basically mimicking yeah. you know that with 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 the, with the counterculture Next thing you know seven foot you know wrestlers have the, <laughs> the bandanas yeah, down on backwards you got conan though you had conan you had, yeah you had a little flavor you yeah. know yeah, I mean, yeah it, it gave us some legitimacy yeah. all right raise this leg as high as you can yeah, pretty good. On the other side. Back down. You're a little twisted. So typically you get twisted this yeah. way? Yeah. You're right. He knows his body well. All right. So, you know, you, you make it the NW, the NW takes off hot heat. You said it was 83. What's that? Is it 83 weeks in a row uh, yeah. winning the Monday Night Wars? 83 weeks in a row, we beat, we beat Vince. Then we get the red and black. Yeah. And then multiple time champion, you ended Goldberg's streak. Right. Right. Was not booking, did not book myself to win the match. Who, who started that rumor? I think Bill put it in his book. Oh. So I tell people all the time, they say, yeah, but you booked yourself to beat him. I said, so I booked myself to beat him, then turned around six days later and did the finger poke of doom. Like that was my creation? That was my idea? So who booked it? I mean, Eric? Everybody. Everybody? We wanted to get the belt back on Hulk. Hogan? Yeah. And we wanted to put a, a I mean, we knew Bill was a guy that we wanted to go with. Right. And we basically wanted to kind of create a, uh, a universe where he had to go through, you know, eight of us to get to get his tail shot. So 
then you start tag teaming with, with Dallas. Yep, after uh, Scott, Scott left, me and Dallas started tagging. And then it became, Russo came in and became kind of the, the Millionaire's Club versus the New Kids. Right. Ready to Rumble comes out. Yeah. And then, uh, and then WCW gets bought up. Yeah. And we do Invasion. And I love that, you know, where, reverse invasion. Where people, where, where people say, um, you know, you were, you were, you know, Nash killed WCW, and you know, they throw these things at you, and I'm just like, it just shows you like there's such a culturally with the people that are like that live and die, the, the dirt cheap kids and. You know, the 35 year old trolls that come out of their parents' basement to go watch pro wrestling. Because the, the you know, it's like I watch, the, I don't watch the programming like, you know, because I don't, I don't do it anymore. So there's like, like, the only reason to watch pro wrestling and watch everything is because you're still active and you watch it to book your, you always watch it to book yourself into a position, right. like if I was going to be on that on that show, where would I book myself? You know, makes sense. Pull the elbow back pretty hard. Good. And same thing over here. And then pull back hard. One more time. <laughs> the left one. Over there. Yeah. I got a pretty good today. I got a pretty good one. I got out of the shower. Pop. Did you? On the yeah. Right yeah. Nice. So bring that arm, up, bring him up again there. Yeah, pretty good. How'd that feel? Good. There's any, no grind. Any limitation on either side, really? Is that right? Feel like it's moving better? Yeah, that's pretty. I mean, it's, it, it is what it is because it's just. Right. You know, I, I, I just got um, that uh, Morton Jelly Rejuvenant, that, 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 that product from. Uh, from Pensacola. Uh -huh. I just got that injected a month ago. Okay. And this is what it's supposed to now, what it does is, you know, you put stem cell bone on bone, it just doesn't, there's nothing for it to catch. Right, right. So I've kind of got this biological agent that, that gives it a chance to get in there with some stem cells, but of course you can't use the term stem cell in America. Right. So you have to say Wharton jelly, and they go through the fact that you can only get this Wharton jelly, it has to be taken from an umbilical cord from a woman that goes full term cesarean. Mm. So I guess that the umbilical cord can't leave the body because then it becomes tied into the placenta and it's all this, you know, Texas six week rule and everything else we got going on in this Yay. up country. Smiles <laughs> are good stand up. <laughs> Reach that shoulder down. Keep reaching it down. Chin down? Yeah, just kind of, so like pull that lat to like pull the shoulder down. Yeah, there we go. And a little more. A little more. Good. Okay, go ahead and raise the right arm again. There we go. I can feel that release in my look on my low uh, On the other side? Lat. So same thing here. And then pop forward and reach, pull down with the lat a little more. A little more. There it goes. Good. Okay. Yeah. And then drop that down. And then pull that arm in and then pump forward. Keep reaching down. So then you took a little break, came back in, NWO came into WWE. Right. right? Little invasion. They killed us. Killed us. Right, revenge. Yeah, I'm right. As I said, the the, the Confederate generals joined <laughs> joined the North and yep. they put us on a suicide run to kill us. <laughs> well, we all knew that was going to happen. Of course, right? They killed Dallas. They killed us all. Yeah, one after another. Goldberg got beat up by Christian with a chair in a cage. <laughs> I mean, they just destroyed anybody and everybody that, that was a WCW star. There it was. Instead of. Instead of building it up together, yeah. you know, it was yeah. just, that's what happens. You get a, a vanity project sometimes. You know, that's the whole thing to me. It's just I, I look at Revenge. that. And it's just 
Yeah, but at the same time, I understand. I completely understand. But it's that. it's a little crazy if you think about it because it, it it didn't undercut WWF at the time. They both elevated so much higher because of the rivalry, and you could have kept elevating together. You know, I've always said that 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 our that eighty three weeks we basically built the Saturn Five. Yeah, we built the Saturn Five. Because if you look then, at the ratings of both, then, it's then, not like WWF. And then it was, just, it was just like events came in like this. I got from here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But he didn't. He didn't have the vision. You know. Or maybe he had the vision. It was just that. It was just like, the thing was, I'm going to let people know. Don't try this again. You when, know. When he went to when he went to war, uh -huh. he knew that he could go sexual. Right. And he knew our standards and practice wouldn't allow that. Right, right, right. So actually, you know, they got Jenna Jameson on their show. They got, they're taking it to a dinner. They, they got the, Sable with the with the handprints. Yeah, I mean the things. With the Mark Miro handprints. Yeah, they're doing. <laughs> I mean, it, it, they're taking things to a, a level that we can't do. And Sable's numbers were actually, from a booking standpoint, having to book against like. When is Sable? Like, okay, she's done. Now we can put this. Right. We're rotating things off of her. Right. Because she popped before, I mean, before Rocky did, really. Yeah. You know, so it yeah. was, you know, her Mankind ish. And, uh, you know, Steve was really starting to catch his stride there, yeah, too. Yeah, Steve. Yeah. Once Steve won that, uh, that King of the Ring mm -hmm. and had that match with Brett. Which was 97? Yeah. That, that's when. You know, started to tilt again. Yeah, tilt back. That, that that was that. You know, well, I mean, you can see it coming from a mile away. You guys are in there beating people up, coming out of the crowd, hitting people with sticks. It was like, okay, this uh, would turn into a scene of stuff eventually, right? The right. economics, uh, you know, and then it's like, oh, well, here I'm gonna drink a beer and flip everybody off and throw things in the crowd and, and go against my boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anti Which the guys just did, right? Anti here's the, yes. He's anti-hero again. And see, I always thought that what they should have done for, for, for the NWO was it eventually become the, instead of WCW, NW, become, NWO right. Nitro. Right. Where everybody was part of the NWO. Sure. It was just, now it was a brand and we would just be the wolf pack. Right. They'd be the horsemen. They'd be, and then from that start the war again uh -huh. with Dallas and like the Revolutionary War, where these guys are trying to take and make it WCW again. Right. And then that, but they, with, with, they never let it completely take over. NWO Wolfpack never never had the war. Right. So if they never have the war. Then there's not a winner out of that. It became convoluted. They just meshed it. Yeah. You know. It became the Tet Offensive. And then, and then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. And then you start putting the belts on, you know. Everybody. So I'm going to help you get that upper cheek spine. So look up a little bit. Sorry about the pits. You're good. My hands go here. <laughs> I'm used to it. That one. And then push that hip forward. Push in. Yeah, go back to center. And then turn the right foot out just a little bit. And we go to there. Hip forward. Like that. Like you're yeah. Perfect. So we've been we've been asking this question on people. Uh, wrestling wise, top ten on your mile rushmore, who do you put there? Top ten? Yeah. We were doing four, but it was just like everybody was going with the icons. So he said 10. Um, Flair. Yep. Hogan Savage. Austin. Brett. Rock. Shawn Michaels. How many is that? You got uh, seven. Seven. HBK. Um, Harley, Harley Race. Okay. Probably uh, Bruiser Brody. There you go. Now he's dipping back into the old school. Yeah, oh, I gotta get a couple old school guys. And uh, I think Rey Mysterio. I like it. That was a, he was kind of a. The, yeah. You know. I, I put him in there too. Still, still, still flying around. Yeah, huh? yeah. Yeah, really. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna put any of my friends and, you know, but I mean, Sean, I will, but I mean, I think Scott 
you know, Scott Hall would be a top 10 guy. Yeah. And keep turning. Keep going. Keep going. A little further. All the way over right shoulder. Good. And there. Keep going. Keep going. A little more. A little more. Good. Well. How about there? Same spot? A little bit further. Lean towards me more. Now. Good. Okay. Let's look right again. Yeah. Hey. That's pretty good. Yeah. It's right there. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> it's about a 15 degree change. Yeah. <laughs> that was definitely it. All right. Now push your skull towards me. So I'm going to go up on your skull a little bit here. Tilt to the left. There we go. Good. Yeah, looks pretty good. Can I yeah. look up all the way? Yeah. Yeah, that's great motion. <sighs> what do you think? Good. Yeah. <laughs> Had enough? Yeah. <laughs> Is it here for one day? I think so. Yeah, I mean, it's. You know, just the uh, working with what we got, right? With, we, yeah, but if I had to pick a point that was was the most painful, was it when you hit that bike, the uh, peck. Oh yeah. All right, tell them where they can find you: social media, website. Uh, Real Kevin Nash on Twitter. Real Kevin Nash on Instagram. I do know Facebook. Uh, not a fan, though. Instagram is basically the same. Um, that's about it. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, we, I've got a movie coming out with Channing Tatum. Hopefully, it comes out in January or February there called Dog, which is going to be, uh, I think, fantastic. Uh, Channing's directorial uh, debut. And uh, hopefully, I get a call this week uh, for, for an, another film I've been trying to get on for uh, several months. Yeah, I forgot to mention, if you guys didn't know, he, he's been in a ton of movies, you know, so he's also got the acting chops as well. Uh, of course, my personal favorite, Super Shredder. Super Shredder, uh, I, I saw a lot of that, that, that they just put that figure out up there, that Super Shredder figure, at Nico. They put out like. Are they uh, giving you a cut of that? No, man, but I'm so, I'm, I'm signing for 50 a shot. There we go. So. All right, so there you go. <laughs> you put out 30,000 of them, sooner or later I'll get to them. There you go. So if you want your so Super Shredder sign. 30,000 times 50 is. It's a lot. But he's paying taxes on all of it, I swear. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, make sure you go check him out. Have him sign your chest, your action figures, whatever. So keep buying NWO shirts. Yeah. I got some. You know, anything NWO, man, that, that, that goes straight to the uh, Berkshire or Hathaway uh, there you go. Class A fund. See? <laughs> See, he's got to figure it out. And then uh, make sure you guys so, uh, go sub to DDP Yoga. Thanks for uh, Dallas for hooking us up and, and linking us. Yes, uh, thank you, Dally. And uh, yeah, be on the lookout for him soon. Uh, new movie, Chan Tatum. Check him out. Go give him some love on social media. And if you're in the basement and, and talking trash to him, don't go check him out. We don't, nah. we don't need that. But it, 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 it's just, this was a, this is amazing. This is a, this is a turn back the, the, the clock moment for me. You know, when you think that uh, you're done, there's, there's always a new modality or some guru or genius that's figured out because he's in as worse shape as we are how to how to make your shit fire back up and i i feel great so there we go check this man out i appreciate it cool see you guys on the next one